Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm in the street, and today we're installing Antegros Linux. Antergos. It's Antergos. So we're just gonna jump right in. And I'll kind of explain why I'm doing this, what we're doing, and why I'm doing it while we're doing it. So this happened to my Ubuntu installation today. Uh, I actually, I was messing around with graphics drivers, so it was not just out of the blue, but yeah, I did not realize that it was physically possible for this to happen, so thought it was kind of funny. I didn't know that this monitor actually supported anything other than 1440p, because in the past it has actually not been able to scale its resolution down, so this must be something the graphics card is doing. Yeah, kind of weird. Okay, looks like everything important is backed up, so that's good. So let me turn off the computer to start with, and now I will go and unplug the external hard drive and plug in our flash drive. So here we go, booting off of the flash drive if we can. So Antergos is based off of Arch Linux, and it doesn't actually do much to Arch Linux. It doesn't hold back packages. It only adds one repository. It does not remove any Arch repositories. Basically, all Antergos does is it sets up your Arch Linux installation for you so you don't have to set it up. Because I've been using Arch Linux on a low-power gateway laptop, which you can see over there. I've been using Arch Linux on that for a while now, and I have absolutely loved it. But it was a pain to get set up, and I don't quite know if I messed anything up or not. So eventually I might be comfortable using Arch Linux on my main machine, but right now I want to use something a little more polished. Um, I'm comfortable maintaining Arch Linux, I just want something easier to use to install it. So that's why we're trying out Antergos. Now this is actually a really great time. Okay, what's this? That's kind of weird. Change background. Okay, so that must be random. It must just be on a timer or something. This is the default Antergos background. There we go. Apparently it's not the default, but it, I thought it was. And I'll get a little bit more into Antergos and what it is as it's installing, like I said. But let's go ahead and launch the graphical installer. So English next. Uh, da, da, da. Now, you'll notice this looks a lot like the Ubuntu installer, and actually this isn't focusing way too well. Sorry about that. This looks like the Ubuntu installer. It is not actually based off of the Ubuntu installer in terms of code. They wrote this installer. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that because, you know, C's and N's don't normally go together. And then there's another C right after it, followed by an H. Chinchi is what I would guess. Chinchi is written you know, from, from scratch. They wrote all the code for Chinchi from scratch. They just took the UI look and feel of the Ubuntu installer to base this off of because the Ubuntu installer is nice and simple. So let's keep going. We are not in Australia. We are in the US. Next. Okay. Chicago. Next. All right. And you can actually choose, you can choose to have no GUI. You can have cinnamon which is interesting that they have cinema as an option. You can have KDE, Mate, Openbox with, uh, not sure if it comes with anything else. There's an XFCE edition. We're going to go with GNOME. GNOME is like the the standard for Antergos, just like KDE is the standard for OpenSUSE. You can get GNOME on OpenSUSE. KDE is the standard for OpenSUSE. You can get any of the major desktop environments on here. I don't see LXDE actually, but you know, it just pre-installed, you can get most of the major desktop environments on Antergos, but GNOME is like their preferred one that they spend the most time polishing, so we'll stick with GNOME. Feature selection, this is interesting. So, Arch user repository support we want to turn on. Bluetooth support we will leave off because I don't think I have Bluetooth in this computer. Extra true type fonts, yes. GNOME extra contains extra GNOME applications. Yeah, let's install that because we want the full GNOME experience. LibreOffice, we want that. Printing support, we want. Proprietary software, we do want, just don't hate me. I'm going to select that because this is my main machine. And uncomplicated firewall, sure. So this is why you would use Antergos rather than just Arch, because Arch, you would have had to go through the command line and set all of these up individually, whereas Antergos 
is giving you just on and off very simple options. Do you want me to enable the AUR? Do you want me to install true type fonts for you? And some people complain that Answer Ghost installs too much. So even though GNOME is the default desktop, they ask, do you want extra GNOME applications? All right, so it tells you your firewall settings, the default firewall settings, that's very nice. AUR, um, not supported by Arch or Answer Ghost, I understand. Let's choose exactly where we want to install. So this we want to format as ext4 and mount as slash. This we want to format as ext4 and use as slash home. Looks just like the Ubuntu installer. I mean, not just like it. The left and right buttons are up here, but it looks very similar. Very nice. So yeah bootloader installation all right we'll leave it on because I think it's already on my hard drive right now so yeah we'll leave it on the hard drive because that's mounted as dev slash SDA for some reason I guess because the port it's plugged into so yeah uh, we will have slash slash home format the two XT drives do not touch the NTFS drive because that's got a bunch of nice things on it that we don't want to touch SDA1 SDB1 okay Let's write those changes. Whoa. So my hard drive light is on right now. So I was having problems in Ubuntu with my graphics driver. It was actually freezing my system. It was writing log files that were gigabytes big. It was locking my hard drive light on while it was doing that. And that was why I started to get worried that my hard drive was going to die. And so I started, you know, backing up all of my files because I thought my hard drive might die. So I already had all my files backed up and ready to install another distro anyway. And then I found out that my hard drive was not in fact dying. The problem was my graphics driver. And I have to use the proprietary graphics driver on this computer. If I don't, you, you've you probably seen some of the artifacts that have been happening. If I don't use the proprietary driver, artifacts happen slowly and eventually the entire computer crashes. So yeah, I, I really need that proprietary NVIDIA driver, unfortunately. And the Ubuntu repositories don't have the latest driver. So I went to install the latest version of the driver manually because I thought maybe that might fix whatever bug is causing I had a bunch of uh, system problem detected, would you like to report boxes on Ubuntu, and of course I don't want to report them. But yeah, I went to install the updated version of the graphics driver, but it said that headers weren't installed, and I checked. And I had the Linux 3.13 kernel, but the 3.16 headers were installed, and I couldn't figure out how to install the 3.13 headers. They were not in the repositories as far as apt-get was concerned. So yeah, I decided, why not take a break? Now, as I was saying earlier, I'm not sure if I got through it or not, Antegros is based off of Arch, and Arch is, it's supposedly not as stable as other distributions. Here's the thing, with Arch, you get the latest versions of packages as soon as they come out. So even though you don't get tested packages, you get bug fixes a lot quicker as well. So. Like I said, I've been loving it on my laptop. I have not had any problems with it on that. I, I don't use my laptop for hardly anything, though. I use it for web browsing sometimes, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see with my audio production, my video production. I actually have crashes happen sometimes on Ubuntu, which is supposed to be the most stable thing available. Ubuntu LTS, I've had Caden Live crash sometimes. I've had Audacity crash a lot. So yeah, I'm uh, kind of interested to see if Audacity will be more stable and if Caden Live will be more stable on here. Because there will be, you know, it'll be more up to date. And I do see the change logs, like, oh, these are the updates that we've made to this program. You don't have them yet because you're stuck on an older version that it's in the Ubuntu repositories, but this is the new version. So yeah, Arch pretty much updates things as quickly as they come out. Antergos sets up Arch for me. And yeah, this is a really good time for Linux enthusiasts right now because a new version of OpenSUSE just came out. A new version of Fedora just came out. The Fedora version came out, I think, like maybe less than a month ago. And the OpenSUSE version came out like six days ago, not even a week ago. So yeah, if this doesn't work out, then I've got plenty of fallback options. I'll probably go to OpenSUSE if this doesn't work. I might try Fedora because I wanted to try Fedora for a while because I hadn't used it for a while, even though it was the first distro I ever used, so I was kind of excited to use it again, and then I didn't end up using it again. So yeah, I might try Fedora again, 
if this doesn't work but we're gonna plan on it working because it looks really nice as you can see um, they do have a deal with the developers of the Numix theme. The Numix theme you normally have to pay for. I'm sure you could pirate it if you wanted to, but I'm not that kind of person, of course. So normally I would have to pay for the Numix theme. Antergos actually has a deal with them where they have a Numix style theme they make just for Antergos. It's kind of like their square theme. It might be their square theme for most of the icons, but then um, they just kind of Antergos it up with rounded corners and more rounded... Um, different color scheme. So yeah, you can see I think we might have more apps in here than we did a minute ago because it's downloading and installing things. Um, yeah, you can see the nice animations here. This should be GNOME 3.14 if I'm correct. Let me let me see. If it's not, then we should be able to update as soon as this is installed and we should be able to update to 3.14 because Antergos does have quote-unquote stable releases but as soon as you install it, then that doesn't really matter because you're using the Arch repositories anyway. So if we go to details, yeah, see we're on GNOME 3.12, which is what I thought because of this animation is a fading animation. But yeah, I think we will be able to update to GNOME 3.14 as soon as we're done installing here. If we're not, then I'll just say, okay, that's fine and go with the flow. But if we are able to update to GNOME 3.14, yeah, you can see GNOME getting started 3.14. I think it might even update for us. So the, the stable releases for Antegros, Antergos, the stable releases for Antergos are just for the ISO file. They're not actually for what you're stuck with. Whereas like OpenSUSE, if you install OpenSUSE 13.2, you're stuck with whatever versions got put into 13.2. And it's even worse on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is usually more behind than OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is normally pretty good. And I might try OpenSUSE's Tumbleweed option, which is OpenSUSE has a, a rolling distribution option that they have. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the rolling release model like Arch has, but you get more stability like regular OpenSUSE has. But yeah, like I said, just going to plan on using Antergos for a while. I actually realized I changed Ubuntu from regular Ubuntu to Ubuntu GNOME, and also I changed it from 14.04 to 14.10 but it was still the same installation and I had actually had that installation since school started which was around mid-August so yeah I've had that for like three months now and that's a long time for me for having the same distribution I was trying to keep it until winter break I've got like two more months left until winter break I, I couldn't really do it couldn't hold back just got a little bored so this will spice things up a bit in case you're not familiar this Antergos slogan ready to kiss kiss is a, basically the model of arch it's an acronym it stands for keep it simple stupid so that's what that slogan is referencing because arch's philosophy is don't install anything you don't need Antergos is actually going to install more things than we need as you can see it's installing 874 packages before we've even started using our system. Arch would give you like like a hundred packages maybe. I actually have no idea what the real number would be but Arch would give you absolutely nothing, no GUI, none of these extra programs pre-installed, none of that. Arch would give you a working Linux command line, a package manager, and that's it. Antergos gives you a little bit more so yeah it actually doesn't keep it as simple as arch does but like i said it's a lot easier to get set up especially if you're concerned okay that was an accident can i get back please can i get back please okay thank you so that's what that little lock button does there yeah i was just clicking around seeing what all these buttons do I, this is a nice theme. I love the gnome theme that they put on here. They got rid of the rounded sides on the the panel at the top. And yeah, the way this dock is styled is nice. Not sure if you can see that there. Yeah, nice and refreshing. Because I've been on the default gnome look for a while. Other than my desktop background, of course, and my extensions. So maybe not default, but pretty close. That's interesting. Chinchi. It says chinchi.py up here, so this must be written in Python or it might be written in Python. And just finishing up, and that didn't take a lot of time. It takes less time to configure Antegros because it doesn't give you as much background stuff as say Ubuntu or OpenSUSE would. Um, same with just Arch, would have taken probably more time than the other distros actually 
just doing it, you know, figuring out how to type everything and install it properly, but the actual loading phase would be lower. And also, this should be quicker to an extent. It should definitely start up a little faster than, than other distributions as well. All right, installation complete. Restart the system now. So as soon as it shuts off, I will take the flash drive out of the computer. So I'll take that out now. Hopefully we boot in here. Good. And enter Ghost Linux. Got a nice themed grub thing, which most distros do now. There's that weird error message I get every time I start Linux on any distro. And here we go. So we have our user account. Log in. And I see hard drive light. There we go. And you're out of focus. There you go. So yeah, this is actually a lighter gray than it looks like in this video. That's not black, that's a light gray. Um, so as you can see, we just have a... Oh, alright, so we have four pages of apps now, because we chose to install those extra GNOME applications. Once again, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can have this install with, like, one page of apps, and that's it. Because that's the arch way, is to only install things that you actually want and need, and not to install extra stuff for you. So yeah, like I said, I'm probably going to have to go and get a different driver now and I'm also gonna spice things up here with extensions and I need to go and copy my files back over to my home folder but yeah that is installing Antegros Linux I will definitely keep you guys informed and tell you what I think of this oh let's see what version of GNOME we have we have version 3.14 as you can see so yeah um, I will definitely keep you guys updated because like Ubuntu everyone knows that Ubuntu works well but Antegros, Antergos, and uh, Arch as well, or they're not known to work as well, but they might work just as well. So yeah, I will definitely keep you guys updated. For now though, that's all. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm Learning the Street, and I will see you guys later. See ya.